Whoa, okay. I think I may have finally found a virtual reality experience that can simulate the feeling of being turned inside out. I'm looking into the eye of the storm. One day after waking up from my seven year coma, <gasps> I found that game developers had been emailing me their own games for me to review. Oh. And on that day, I decided... Yeah, fuck it. I'll review every VR game ever made. <laughs> Welcome to Enter Game. <laughs> The first thing I notice in this game, other than the fact that it's some kind of first person melee game, is that when I hold up my arm, my hand in real life is here instead of here. So when I look down while I'm wearing the Vive, it appears that my hand is starting here, and my sword is sticking out from up here. I imagine the reason for this is to extend your reach a little, making whatever combat there is slightly more effective. And after a few seconds, you do honestly stop noticing it completely. You dare throw my honor into question? How about you? I also notice your health and your stats are on your wrist, so checking these is simply like checking your watch. So you lift your arm. Have you got the time? The craziest part of this game is making selections within the menus. You see, both your hands are always holding something. So I'll just click here. Here. Shit. But you can still only use your hands themselves to press buttons. So you have to insert the weapons themselves into the selection you want until your fingertips reach the button and then it works. And with the shield, this is slightly confusing. Honestly though, throughout the game I keep instinctively trying to use the sword to select stuff and because that doesn't work I just assume I can't pick this item up yet. Then I remember I just have to insert the sword into the walls or something and it works fine. I've done it. Okay anyway, let's actually start the game and try this out. So I select the level here. Oh no, wait, I need to use my hands. And I select this and nothing happens. I've tried grabbing it, tried other levels, tried teleporting into it. What do I do? How am I supposed to get in here? Oh. Well that's a bit obscurely placed, isn't it? I mean, this is a pretty intense looking portal. I'm quite anxious about what will happen when I go it. Oh. Well, this isn't so bad. And the actual game? Please act prudently and be careful in everything. One. So in this game you fight through each level using melee weapons that can all actually collide with each other like in real combat, unlike some other games. The fighting actually uses blocks and parries as you would expect, and it genuinely works really well. It's pretty exciting holding up your sword and shield, primed for battle, ready as an enemy approaches. My KFC is here. Feast yourself, human, for the day will come where Khajiit will taste your flesh. The graphics are generally quite appealing, and on first glance they're no more advanced than Skyrim, and I'm perfectly fine with that. But unlike Skyrim, the enemies in this game actually look like, you know, fucking people. But its draw distance is what is driving me crazy. Watch what happens as I back away. Everything starts leaving this plane of reality like it's got somewhere better to be. Oh really, patch of grass, you're that sick of being around me. Damn you, grass. Then when I walk back, it starts appearing at such a rate, you feel like a fucking forest is about to sprout up in front of you at any moment. You do have to hold yourself back and stop yourself from doing this. But if you treat it like you're actually fighting, it's genuinely really enjoyable. In Gorn, the fun is about absolutely annihilating your opponent rather than, you know, actually using a fighting stance similar to that of real life. I shall be known as the Grand Champion. This game tries to make the fighting feel real, and on the most part, it succeeds. It's like I'm really there. The voice acting is where it gets me though. My favorite is the guy clearly recording himself from inside a cardboard box. Bro, bro, where have they gone? And so our hero continued his journey across the world. Other than that, it's one of the better hand-to-hand -hand combat games I've tried. The fighting is fun, if not a little fucking nuts. The flash effects of the swords and shields hitting each other at peak times is like a crate of fireworks going off. What, you think I made that joke because this game is set in China? Look guys, I don't know if you know this, but the Chinese invented loads of things. Compasses, the modern brewing of alcohol. Ooh, a new weapon! F flying... knives. I mean, they do fly. <laughs> These are actually really awesome and surprisingly easy to aim. They sort of catapult themselves out, making them a little simpler than the throwing mechanics from other games. You can even hold down the throwing button to, uh, completely blind yourself. Oh, did it suddenly get... They get really, really hot in here. Oh, they blow up after they've been charged, okay. A little bit like my Samsung. Hey. Here we go, bring it, you fuckers. Oh. Right. Better handle this the good old fashioned way. Okay, next game.
What's wrong with this? In this introductory email from the game's creator, they assure me of the game's quality by informing me the prequel was played by... Jackaplier and... Mark Septic Eye. Look, I know these two are... important. But combined, I think they've screamed over every single game ever made, so it's hardly a symbol of quality, is it? Oh, look, a sign. It says... something. This is one of those Escape the Room style of games, which I am extraordinarily fond of. There is actually an Escape the Room game I wanted to promote here, but when I Google everything I can remember about it, all I get are images of Mary Berry. The fuck is that? <laughs> the Escape the Room genre of game lends itself really well to the VR genre of game. Because they're basically just look around and pick shit up games, which is what VR is best at. Oh look, you found a picture! You win! I like this picture too, but it isn't my favourite piece of art by a long shot. You see, having a large room to explore is difficult if you aren't, you know, playing in a large room. Help! Now this isn't a problem if you're American and you design your houses based on how many fucking basketball courts you can fit inside. But here in London, if you can put your arms out and not touch opposite sides of the walls, you're basically in the top 1%. I'm rich. Oh, and speaking of Americans, I found this one guy who makes, uh... Videos. Yeah, that seems about right. It's Sorrow TV. Each area of the game is separated by a single elevator, which rotates as you go up or down. This ultimately means even though you're just walking back and forth in your house, you end up exploring the whole game without hitting any walls, as you can see here. This is a very elegant solution to a size problem many people may have. I mean, just check my inbox. Wait, it's... it's just a joke about me having a small penis? Yep. Maybe next time we'll have a fight about it or something. But even after all the hours I've spent playing VR, this spinning still manages to make me feel a bit dizzy, so I have to shut my eyes whenever I'm in here, and closing my eyes inside a game while being in a room inside my house where I already can't see anything is a little bit strange. Also, for the love of God, don't click S on the elevator! Twenty seconds later. What? I'm at the beginning of the game again and there's nothing here to do, so I just have to go back. Oh. Oh yeah. This is particularly frustrating if you're not sure how to solve a puzzle. Looking around the whole map trying to work out what needs to go where takes way too long. Do, do you want the wine? Do you want the wine? Why does no one want the fucking wine? You want the wine, don't you? Yes. I need a key. Where could the key be? I just need a key! <laughs> there isn't a lot else to say about this game otherwise. The atmosphere is great, the art style is cool, and the puzzles are nice and difficult, so it keeps you looking around and thinking. And difficulty is generally what this genre is known for anyway. This game was basically made by a single person, and in the email from him, I am wisely informed the game takes 20 to 13 minutes to get the hang of. 20 to 30? What the fuck? This game has intense movement. You may fall over in real life. Please clear play space. Oh, fuck. You hear that, Sid? I'm gonna trip over you if you sit there. Khajiit shall remain here, and once the human is dead, I will find- Who's a cute boy? Khajiit is disgraced. So you start this game and it immediately drops you right in the deep end. Like, what the fuck is going on here? What does all this do? And I'm slowly sliding towards this ramp. I don't want to go down there yet. I'm not ready. Stop sliding! Ten seconds later. <laughs> fuck me, this game is incredible. This is real footage of me playing the game for the first time. And here is me genuinely falling over because I kept losing idea of what angle I was standing at in real life. Am I standing up or sitting down? In Jet Island, you're sort of a mix of Spider-Man and Iron Man. Hmm. That's a lot of men, isn't it? What about... Iron Heart and Spider Gwen. And before I knew what I was doing, I was slamming into walls at the speed of sound every 30 seconds. And here's another real recording of the first time it happened. No, 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 oh God! Oh. The bottom line here is that flying around and swinging about is only going to be fun if you feel like it's really happening. This game was built from the ground up with that goal in mind, and it pulls it off perfectly. The number of times I had to come to terms with my inevitable demise to only find out I'm of course playing a fucking game and the walls aren't actually trying to kill me was a little bit life-changing. Fucking walls! Press grip to stop- Oh, well you could have told me that before this happened seven fucking times. Oh, it's all over! You have to get the hang of the hook shots really quickly too, and using them reminds me of this lesser-known game that just came out on the PS4. But I don't know what would be more fun, really. I mean, here you get to swing around a city filled with buildings. I mean, look at all those different colours of 
bricks. Whereas here you only get to swing around the dreamlike wonderland of intrigue and majesty with leviathan bosses and free-form physics puzzles with jetpacks and guns. What are you doing? Don't talk shit about the Spider-Man game, you fucking idiot. The graphics may be a little dated for some, but I feel like it's got that old-timey polygon feeling from 90s PC adventure games like Little Big Adventure or Fallout 2 that gives me that sort of otherworldly feeling in totally the right way. I mean, as you play, you get little glimpses of the rest of the map and you get that wonderful feeling of, oh my god, what is going on over there? Can I go over there? Like, I mean, what the fuck is that? I didn't realize this was Breath of the Wild. The map screen, at least early on, is an absolute clusterfuck. I mean, what in God's name am I looking at? Where am I? Where am I going? What does gross income actually mean? It's like this with all maps in VR games. I mean, I need simplicity. This could be anything between a map of a theme park to a meteorite crash zone. Oh, but what if a meteorite really did hit a theme park? Yeah. Make it stop. And finally, the absolute best part of the game is the gun that behaves like the noisy cricket from Men in Black. Kay, get down. Oh no. This joke was meant to be completely different. As you can see, these are filled with helium. The website I bought them off. These balloons do not float. Who the fuck sells balloons that don't float? I mean, for God's sake. <laughs>